All right, I want to hop to another segment that we we think we're going to do weekly, which is the creator of the week. Brian, it's your week to highlight the creator of the week. Cool. I thought this was a great idea, by the way. And And although I'm doing a food creator this week, I think that I'm going to try to make a concerted effort to push outside of food. Hopefully in the future, it could be people outside of food and at all different stages, right? Whether they have you know, millions of, uh, of people in the community or just they're just starting out. This week's creator for me is Alvin, Alvin Zhao. Uh, you guys all met Alvin when we had the dinner last week, but Alvin and I go pretty far back. You know, I first met Alvin when he was a, a rising sophomore uh, here in New York. And he reached out through his alumni network at the school to try and see if he can like link with people in entertainment or startup. And my friend uh, connected us and Alvin was essentially our intern. So he came in, he crushed it. Like right away, he got it. And this is like right after Maker Studios and like all the, all the media stuff and he got it, he took to it. Going to Buzzfeed and I don't know if he'll say this publicly, but like he essentially pioneered that tasty overhead shot with the hands sped up like instructional style, right? He made that, he won a Webby for that. And um, it's been amazing to see his growth. And, and the thing that is inspiring and the reason why I want to really call him out is, um, you know, he's now built on that, not only built on that format, but built on that career to get to a place where he's like, you know what, I just want to do what I want to do. And that's so dope because what I think he's doing right now is literally changing the game. He has these formats called A Day in the Life Of. I think he started it, he started the first version of it while he was at BuzzFeed. Like now what he's doing is he's literally just going into these environments and uh, one man banding an entire magnum opus of what that day is for that person. He just did one at Goldie's, which is apparently the best barbecue in all of the United States right now. It's like folks that left Franklin's uh, to, to essentially do it even at a crazier level. And uh, he flew down there, spent a week, and he's incredible filmmaking. When I looked at it, I was like, oh my God, he's literally gonna change the game because if you're Netflix or if you're Hulu or if you're any of these people, you're seeing what one Alvin can do by himself and then put that up against the heavyweights in the industry like Gelb are doing with that entire chef's table or Jiro Dreams of Sushi or any of that kind of stuff. Alvin's essentially been able to compress all of that, do it much more efficiently and beautifully. So anyway, long-winded way of saying like, I'm a huge fan and I think he's gonna change everything. Yeah, so specifically we're talking about his barbecue film, as you mentioned, and I think what the film does really well is that it's a portrait of these people. It's really sincere, and you get this sense of Alvin being in the film where he doesn't have to host the film. So he's in parts, but outside of that, it's also the atmosphere that he helped create during the filmmaking process, the comfort that they have with him. Obviously, he has such a high level of proficiency in cooking, um, so I think he got like, you can sense that, that he has their respect as well. And, um, as I mentioned to you, Brian, like, I think that sure, someone, one person doing chef's table will happen, you know, it just did basically with Alvin. Um, but I think what's more resonated with me even more about the film is just that he has this proficiency, um, w- with the camera and you know, with, with all of his tools that allows him to just be present the whole time. And you feel him. You just feel him in every aspect of the film. And um, I think that's really unique to, to Alvin. So I love the film. I thought it was amazing. Everyone has to go check it out. Just to add on to that point and give you a little bit more inside baseball, I think that sincerity comes out for Alvin because he is sincere. He greatly, it's, it's ironic, you always have these moments in life where like, you know, the person that you might have sort of influenced in the beginning will then influence you later on. That definitely happened with Alvin eight, nine months ago, I was talking to him and I'm like, dude, you're doing all these amazing things. You know, you could be doing, you, you, you know, why don't you get a production deal? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Like he had all of that. And I was talking to him about all that. And, and he's like, you know what, Brian, if I'm being honest, like they try to make me a manager when I was at Buzzfeed, they try to give me more responsibility. I've been approached that all this stuff. And he's just like, yo man, I love what I do. I just want to be able to make what I want to make, when I want to make, how I want to make. And none of that other stuff, like, nah, that's not for me. And that's, I don't know if that's a product of him being young. I don't know if that's a product of him being like, just more pure, but like that really affected me and then what we're doing too with the Righteous Seats. And I think that, like it inspired me. And I think that that sincerity and that inspiration definitely makes his format and what he's doing right now much better than everyone else out there. Cause that, I feel that come through.